come on like so so that is configuration manager it is a little bit of a whistle stop tour um but given our time constraints i don't think we can do very much else uh, if we move on to the to the main section of compass I'll just close that window uh which is this icon here when we when we come to the main section of compass it asks you for your username and when you when you type in your username it will show you which groups and projects you are allowed to to access so you can see i'm logged in here and as this user i have access to two different groups and only one project if i choose a different user um, i'll use just the, the default one just to, to show the principle uh, if i use that user you can see oh, he only gets one but uh, and he only gets one project as well but you can see it automatically populates what that user is allowed to do and what groups he may be associated with so we are interested in this Scion training user and I haven't set a password, so I can just press OK. So when we move into the main section of Compass, uh, we can look at the various aspects of, of what Compass does. I'll try and go through a, a logical series of things that uh, a user would normally do from, from maybe building a method all the way through to completing a calibration curve and delivering a completed report. So if we started off to, to build a, a new method, we've already created the system within uh, Configuration Manager. I can see a new method. Um, the system that I want to use it with would appear in this box. You can see I only have one system. I can see next. We have to give the method a name. So I'll maybe just give it uh, today's date. Just uh, See if we can get a few more of these late arrivals to come in. There we go. So when we're building a new method, the system tries to lay it out in terms of a logical sequence of things uh, that you're going to do. Now, for our demonstration today, I have a What's, what's called a peak generator. So it will let me create a little chromatogram that uh, we can show and demonstrate what, what Compass is doing and uh, how we can get to uh, our final uh, calibration curve. But uh, if we go through some of the sections of the method, if we look at the, at the control section of the method, you can see all of the different aspects of the GC are populated here. And these reflect what we see in the actual GC if I do home you can see i have an auto sampler i don't have any valves what uh, injector i may have uh, i can see all of these on the screen uh, and these are reflected in my method because the the configuration of the gc is pulled is pulled through as part of the the setup process within configuration manager so i could set the the, the various parameters for my method will maybe just set that to a minute because if we're going to, if we're going to do a run, uh, we don't want it to take too long. Maybe we just 0.75, that'll be a bit quicker. And uh, I will reduce my stabilization time. Normally for your GC, especially if you're doing temperature program runs, you would want your stabilization time to be a suitable amount of time for the oven to have cooled to the correct temperature and uh, be at a, a good starting point for your analysis. So I'll set this just to a, a low number because we want everything to work quite quickly. Um, in the, the column of pneumatics, we can set uh, what type of flow we want onto a column, whether we want to just have it pressure regulated or we want constant flow or constant linear velocity. Um, all of these are achievable from within here. What detectors we might be doing. So for today's demonstration, I'll maybe just have one detector so i could then set what the temperature was going to be uh what the ranges are going to be and uh, if i maybe need to 
time programme what the detector is going to do. That is also possible from within the compass method. As we move on, uh, we've got some more EFCs down here, things that we're maybe not going to use. We're more interested in compass today than what uh, the GC is actually doing. If we look at this other section, as I said, I have a little peak generator that allows me to create a couple of peaks. So we'll, we'll maybe just do just three peaks just to, just to see. Uh, we'll do something quite quick in here. And take that. We'll have some, some nice big peaks, no point in uh, grubbing around in the in the noise for for any peaks. We want them to be narrow. But as you can see, you can quite quickly build up a method. Uh, we want just a 0.75 minute run. We can set what the injection volume is going to be. We can also set what the run name is going to be. Uh, for every run that we use this method with. So we could just give it a, a simple name or test samples or something like that. And uh, every time we run the method, our file name would be test samples. And then on the end, it would add the number one. And every time we run it, it would increment that suffix two, three, four, and uh, so onward until uh, you get to a thousand and then it will roll over. So that's fine. Um, it can be a, a little bit confusing. You can end up with a with a lot of uh, a lot of names and uh, not always certain when you did these things. Uh, so Compass has some nice features that let you control what the the run name is going to be, and it will let Compass create that automatically. Uh, so when you do this automatically, um, you have what are called variables within Compass. Now, these are uh, parameters that are used within the methods and within the data files to actually conduct the analysis. It records a whole long list of, of variables of data uh, about each analysis. Now, you can use some of those variables. They, they change uh, each time the, a new method is run or a, a method is, is executed or, or whatever's going on. So what I quite like is I can use the acquisition method name. Okay, so that's something I would remember. And uh, another one that I quite like is the is the start run time. So that way I, I know which method it was associated with and I know when I did it. Um, and both of those will appear in the file name. Now you get additional information, you get creation dates and that kind of thing for, for data files. But this can be quite a quick way of uh, scanning down the files that you're interested in and uh, selecting the ones that you want. There are, of course, as you can see, other variables available on this list that uh, if something was more appropriate to your situation, then you could choose one of those. Uh, one of the things about Compass is it is very flexible. Uh, it is very helpful in terms of uh, being able to configure it to be suitable for your particular customer. Not everyone uses Compass in the same way as I do or as you do. And uh, having that flexibility certainly makes it a very powerful tool. So I, I'll select these two for today. Uh, as my file name will now be unique every time because the start run time will continually change, I therefore don't need a suffix. I don't need a number afterwards because I will always have a unique file name. If we look at uh, some of the other sections, we are allowed to have a have a blank baseline that we maybe do some baseline subtraction uh, on our on our method or sorry on our data files. Uh, we can select which file that's going to come from. Uh, the next section we have uh, what's called integration events. Now this is uh, looking at the the nuts and bolts of the analysis, if you like. This is the well, is this a peak or is this not a peak? And is it or is it just noise? Is it a peak that I'm not interested in, uh, or or is the peak uh, not separated well, and I need uh, some extra help to actually associate it from another peak or get it out of the baseline or whatever it is? So in here we have a a long list of tools of different things that we can do uh, to assist 
our detection of peaks and getting them separated from the baseline and even from each other. Uh, I'm not going to go through all of these uh, different sections. You can see there are far too many uh, to, to cover in a webinar like this. Um, they are very easy to use. I'll show just a, a couple of quick, quick, quick ones here just to, just to let you see and get an idea of what might be possible. So, so what you frequently want to do is uh, what would be described in, in other CDSs would be maybe an integrate inhibit or a disable integration or some other uh, description of it. What we call it within the compass is some integration where what you can do is at various time intervals, you can turn the integration on and off. So you may want to turn the integration off at the beginning of the run to ignore the solvent front. That's a very, com a very common thing to do. Um, so for the first maybe two, three minutes until the solvent has completely eluted, you would not look at any peaks. And then maybe after something like two minutes, you would turn the integration back on uh, to, do, to, to start actually collecting data. And you can build up a very long uh, or a very complex time program adding all of these different events depending on what your chromatography looks like and the difficulties that you may have with your separations. These are very helpful tools and, and very useful. Um, we have a quite a nice feature if you build up uh, a long list of these where you have lots of different events, you have lots of different things depending on the runs uh, that are going on. Sometimes for some samples, you may not want to use them. You want to collect all of the data or you want to collect the data in a different way. Uh, what you can do is you can leave them on the list. You don't need to delete them. You can just disable them just by unticking. Then that feature is not used anymore. Um, it's still on your list. And when you need it back, it is a simple case of coming back in, turning it back on, and you're ready to go. So very flexible, very versatile, very quick uh, to, to make changes and, and do things with it. Uh, the, the next couple of items I'm going to skip over. We'll, we'll come back to these. Uh, once we've made uh, some injections, just to let you see, uh, we'll, we'll talk about formats and some of the other things. So with this basic method that I've created, uh, as you can see, just in a, in a few minutes, I would now be at a point where I could uh, collect some data. Uh, I'll just check everything's going to work the way that I hope. Uh, I think my runtime is only 0.75 minutes and my acquisition is 0.75 minutes. Yeah, so we should all be good with this basic method. I can just do a quick start and uh, choose the method I want to run. So I want to run this method we've created right now. I can say OK. It then gives me a, a confirmation screen. Now, I can see something's not, not quite worked out the way that I hope because I, I set that at uh, 0.75. Uh, so I suspect what I have done wrong is I have not edited the correct section. No, I edited the correct section. So what went, what went wrong there? Let's try that again. Quick start. We want this method. And we can say OK. And it's still showing. Ah, OK. So that's a little bit strange. But uh, OK, let's just set that to 0.75. And we'll say Start. And let's go look and see what we get for our analysis. Now, while our analysis is running, we can actually see what's going on, what it's doing. It says it's in pre-run. It says my GC is ready. It's waiting for the injection, and it's now gone to running. So hopefully we will get some data uh, collected here. Yes, there we are. So my B channel is is not doing anything. There's something definitely a bit strange going on here. We should see some peaks. We should have seen some peaks by now. Okay. This is what happens when you fly without a without a safety net. And sometimes things don't quite work out the way that you anticipate. So let's go back to our methods. I did think we had created all the sections that we needed. Yes. Did we do a save? 
this is close the method to be sure. And no, still no data. My run is finished. Let me try just a quick one again, just to just to confirm it's definitely broken and not going to work for me. Uh, there we go. That's looking much better. And start. Yes, I suspect uh, in my haste to get through this uh, that I forgot to press the save button. And of course, it didn't update the changes into my method until I pressed the save button. So as you can see, it's downloading the method. Taking just a minute or two to do it. Come on. Are we going to move on? It's not looking promising at the moment because we seem to be stuck in download method. Oh my goodness. Okay. Um, the the things I intended to show uh, with these, yeah, we seem to be we seem to be stuck. Not quite sure why it's. Why it's stuck in downloading method. My GC is there. It's not running. Should be able to do it. Okay. We'll stop that run. Just say okay. Will we give it one last chance? One last chance to actually do it properly. Okay. Click that box. Say start. Ah, now it doesn't like it at all. Okay, I'm I'm not going to play around with it anymore. Normally, you can download this quite quickly, and everything works in the way that you expect. But of course, when I'm showing it, when I'm demoing it, is when it all goes horribly wrong. And uh, well, that's the nature of the beast sometimes, isn't it? No, definitely not going to do it. 